Okay, uh, decided to make a, I get a tutorial. I mean, I don't even know if this is like a normal thing, how to tune a duplexer, but this is how I have to tune these little flat pack uh, duplexers because all I have is a nano DNA. So uh, I've tuned it, as you can see from the screenshots of last night, I tuned it for the best, um, you know, notch I could on the respective frequencies. So here's what I'm doing today. Uh, on the low port here, I've got my channel zero going out and coming into the low port. And it's transmitting on, or it's putting a signal out on 467-675. And I'm picking it back up on this side. And that's, that's just so I can, I can zoom out and, and look at the tuning if I want. The antenna, however, is hooked to a receiver over here. Uh, right now the squelch is at 10, and it's occasionally breaking the squelch. Um, it's going to be hard for me to do because I only have two hands and I, I need to use tools and different things. But uh, Right now we've got a solid squelch break at 9. You can see the busy indicator and we've got a solid squelch break. Now that's, In my opinion that's pretty terrible because that means this radio is deaf up to the point of squelch 9 uh, as a receiver. So I'm going to tune my low port to try and get that squelch as near one as I can. Zero obviously isn't an option because then it would just always be open. Well, I would like to get that down to one. I, it's probably not going to happen on this little cheap duplexer, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to start tuning these uh, screws and see if we can get it down a little bit. Uh, see what happens here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to eight. Okay, so I got a good solid, biz, solid uh, business, busy indicator there. I'm going to just tune this just ever so slightly. Okay, so we lost it at 8. And I, and I tuned this one in just a little bit. So we're going to go to 7. And we got it again. So we're going to try this again. And it's not getting any better on that one. And I've, I've turned the screw, so I'm going to go back to 8. And this is a very slow, uh, iterative process. Okay, I'm still good at 8, so I'm going to go to 7. This time I'm going to adjust this screw, see if I can get it any better. Uh, I'm just going to keep repeating this. Every time I get it to go down to a lower squelch, I'm going to switch to another one of these tuning rods, and then I'm going to just kind of keep going back and forth over and over and over. Now I purposely tuned all these up. Uh, a little on the high side of the notch. So I knew to get it right, I needed to turn it uh, clockwise, run the screw in. That would be closer to where it belongs. That's really the only indicator I have because when this is in CW mode, I can only see the frequency. And you can see here at the bottom, it's just a bunch of noise because the VNA just doesn't have the range to pick that up. So I'm gonna keep doing this. We'll see what we end up at. And I'll let you know as soon as I get done. Okay, there we are at seven. We got, we're solid off on the squelch, so I'm going to go to six. We got nothing. Okay, that's unexpected. Okay, well, amazingly, I have no signal of 467, 675 getting past the low filter, out this antenna port, and into the receiver. Now, I barely tune these. I mean, literally, it's, it's almost like breathing on them. Um, they're, they're very coarse adjustments, uh, in my opinion, but that's how I've been tuning the duplexers. Now, these aren't going to be, uh, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not great duplexers. They work. Um, you can make them functional, but they're not the world's greatest duplexers. So, you know, don't, don't expect the world out of them. They're cheap, and they are functional, but you are going to get some decent out of your receiver. Mine doesn't have a, I don't have the equipment to detect if it's desensing or not, but I'm quite sure that it is. So just keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated. This is a very time consuming process, or you can go out and buy you a $10,000 analyzer and tune these up, no problem. But I don't think it's worth the average person buying that equipment if you're going to buy a $200 duplexer. Uh, if you're going to buy a $200 duplexer, just have someone tune it and don't expect the world. If you're going to get a really good duplexer and you're, that's kind of, you know, 
your goal is to set a lot of these up then maybe buy the test equipment but it's cheaper to just have someone else do it but again don't expect great great performance out of one of these cheap duplexers see you guys